For most of its history, Italy has not been one single entity. It has either been under the occupation of foreign powers or fragmented city-states. These city-states fought with one another in order to carve out their own fiefdoms, but they also formed alliances to stop states who had grown too powerful, for the one thing that each ruler feared was the hegemony of another state. By the 15th century, there were clear distinctions between states that had power and those who did not. In this video, I'll be covering the four most influential city-states of Italy. The Duchy of Milan was famous for being one of the most warlike states on the peninsula and had a bloody history of betrayal and conquest. Formed in 1395 by Gian Galeazzo Visconti, it quickly became one of the most powerful states in Italy. Its complete control of Lombardy meant that it was at odds with its rival, Venice. Gian Galeazzo would attempt to unite the whole of northern Italy under Milan, but would die before his dream could be realised. By the time the last Visconti Duke, Filippo Maria, died, the Duchy had suffered a serious decline. Many of the lands conquered by Gian Galeazzo were lost, and the Milanese had become universally hated by the rest of Italy. After Filippo Maria's death, Milan changed its government from a monarchy to a republic. The Ambrosian Republic would be a short-lived exercise in democracy that was doomed to fail from the beginning. Many of Milan's neighbours invaded the Republic due to its lack of allies and lack of unity. In order to survive, the Republic employed vast amounts of mercenaries, also known as condottieri, and one of the leaders of these condottieri was a man called Francesco Sforza. Francesco was born into a minor noble family of condottieri and grew up on the battlefield. When he reached adulthood, he became known as an expert warrior and tactician. He was also married to the daughter of the last Visconti Duke, and so he became intertwined with the fate of the city. He would help defeat the Venetians and would become a hero. When the Republic's popularity fell, he turned against them and marched on Milan. The Republic voted that they would bend the knee to him and surrender Milan to Francesco. Francesco had become the first of the infamous Sforza Dukes of Milan and would start to bring the city towards the Renaissance. It would be his son, Galeazzo Maria, who would make Milan one of the centres of the early Renaissance. He would become a patron of the arts, fostering the rise of many musical composers that would become very successful. He would be assassinated in 1476 by the officials of the Milanese court, including a member of the Visconti family. Milan would have an active role in the Italian wars, being situated north meant that any invasion would have to go through their territory. In 1499, the French would oust the current Sforza Duke, Ludovico Sforza, and establish themselves as rulers of the city. Milan would change hands between the French and the Holy Roman Empire until 1521, when the Emperor granted the duchy back to Francesco Maria Sforza. Francesco Maria will be the last Duke of Milan. After his death, the duchy was inherited by the von Habsburgs of Spain and Austria. The most serene Republic of Venice was the preeminent naval and economic power of Italy. Controlling vast amounts of gold and territory, it was seen as the greatest of the Italian city-states. Founded in the late 7th century, its dominion would span from the Lombardian foothills to the coasts of Crete. Its power came from the monopolisation of Eastern trade into Western Europe, which it gained during the Crusades. The Republic's rulers, the Doge, were elected from the patrician houses of Venice, who all came from merchant backgrounds. Houses like the Moschenegos, the Barbaragos and the Contarinis all vied for control of the city. Compared to the politics and intrigue that took place on the Italian mainland, the Venetians were considered more civilised. There were many councils and organisations that made sure that the Doge did not have absolute power and made sure that any rash decisions would be vetoed. By the 15th century, Venice gained vast amounts of territory in northern Italy due to its part in the disintegration of the Visconti hegemony. The Venetians wanted to control the whole of Lombardy and wanted to put an end to their Milanese rivals. During its war against the Ambrosian Republic, Venice would suffer a catastrophic defeat at the hands of Francesco Sforza and end up losing all of their Lombardian land. They also suffered major defeats in the east, losing key areas like Cyprus, Crete and Albania. This triggered a long decline that would end up destroying its naval empire. It did take part in multiple alliances against the Ottomans, including the Battle of Lepanto. By the 18th century, the Republic only controlled the holdings on the Italian mainland and it would eventually fall to Napoleon Bonaparte in 1797. The Republic of Florence was a merchant republic that was based in the Tuscan city of Florence. It controlled large areas of the Tuscan countryside and rose to become one of the key powers in central Italy. Florence is perhaps the most iconic Italian city-state as it fostered the early Renaissance ideals that led to artists like Michelangelo, Donatello, Botticelli and Brunicelli to become the icon they are today. Like every other city-state, its politics were complex and bloodthirsty. Unlike Venice, the Republic of Florence was based around wealthy oligarchs that controlled two key industries of Florence, trade and banking. 
a gonfaloniere was elected from the members of the Signoria, a council of wealthy Florentine landowners. From these conditions, one of the most famous noble houses of the Renaissance would rise, the House of Medici. The Medici's rise to power started when Giovanni de Bici de Medici would found the Medici Bank in 1397. Giovanni's son, Cosimo, would start the Medici dominance of Florence. He began to establish the Medicis as the de facto leaders of the Republic, making sure that the newly elected Gonfalonieri's were loyal to him and that all members of the Signoria were his puppets. He would die in 1464 and his son, Piero the Gauti, would take over. Piero's rule would be marred with invasions from Ferrara and Venice, who wanted to gain land and end Medici dominance. All would fail, although Piero would die before he could take advantage of his victories. His son, Lorenzo de' Medici, also known as the Magnificent, would succeed his father in 1469. Lorenzo is the most famous ruler of Florence, and under his rule, Florence would become THE Renaissance city. It was under him that the famous painter and inventor, Leonardo da Vinci, would enter prominence. Lorenzo would also help establish a peaceful agreement between the major powers of northern Italy, a peace that would collapse after his death. Lorenzo was not immune from plots though. In 1478, a papal-backed plot against the Medici family took place, led by their rivals, the Pazzi. Lorenzo's brother would be killed and many of his supporters murdered. Only when Lorenzo arrived the citizens against the Pazzi did he finally manage to regain the control of the city. Lorenzo would be at odds with the papacy for the rest of his life. By the end of his life, Florence was veering away from the Medici to the words of the Franciscan monk Savonarola. Lorenzo died in 1492, leaving his son, Piero, as head of the Medici family. Piero, known as the Unfortunate, was not as clever or as charismatic as his father. He also had to deal with the rise of Savonarola, who denounced the Medici as usurers. His fall from power would occur when, during the First Italian War, the French king, Charles VIII, demanded passage through the city. Many Florentines saw Charles as a barbarian invader and they did not want him within the city. Piero caved into Charles's demands as he thought that the French would sack the city if he didn't. The citizens of Florence rose up and cast out Piero as they saw him as a traitor and Savonarola quickly became the leader of the city. Savonarola established Florence as a city of God, demanding that all citizens remove their vanities and burn them. Florence, one of the centres of the Renaissance, had turned against the ideas that they helped to create. Many of the more affluent citizens of Florence left behind their fortunes and became nuns and monks. Savonarola would fall from power when he was challenged to a trial by fire. Savonarola was already under the pressure from the Vatican who had excommunicated him. When the trial was cancelled due to bad weather, the crowd turned on him. Savonarola and his supporters were arrested and tortured for information. He confessed to making up the visions he had had, and it was tried and executed. Savonarola's rule had effectively left the Republic with only Florence and its surrounding areas, with the former territories lost to other states. Instead of calling back the Medicis to Florence, the Signoria elected Piero Soderini, a respected member of the Florentine upper class. During his tenure as ruler, he claimed many of the territories that were lost during Savonarola's reign and helped to stamp out much of the corruption left over from the Medici days. His reign would end in 1512, when a Spanish army led by Cardinal Giovanni de' Medici conquered the city. Soderino was forced to flee and his supporters, including the famous philosopher Niccolo Machiavelli, were tortured and exiled. Giovanni de' Medici had become elected as Pope Leo X and appointed his brother, Giuliano de' Medici, as ruler of the city. For the next 20 years, Florence would officially be a republic, but in reality it was an autocratic state under the Medicis. In 1533, this would all change when, under papal decree, Alessandro de' Medici was named Duke of Florence, thus ending the republic once and for all. The Medici would rule Florence until 1737, when the last Medici Duke, Jean Gaston, would die without an heir. The Papal States was the name of the combined territories that were under the rule of the Catholic Church. The Papal States were founded when the Pope gained independence from the Byzantine Empire, who had attempted to conquer the Italian peninsula and confirm themselves as the successors to the Romans. By the Middle Ages, it became apparent that to stay independent, the Popes would need to have a worldly power in case the rulers of Europe did not respect their spiritual power. They expanded their dominions to control the Umbrian region and had considerable influence in the Emilia Romagna. By 1470, the Papal States were now a major power in the peninsula. They had an army that rivaled Florence or Venice, and had many puppet states, such as the Dukes of Urbino. In 1492, the most infamous Pope to ever occupy the Chair of St. Peter would be elected. His Papal name was Alexander VI. 
but he's better known by his birth name, Rodrigo Borgia. Borgia was born on the 1st of January 1431 to Joffrey Scriva and Isabel de Borgia. Rodrigo grew up in Valencia where he was brought up by his mother's family and he would take the Borgia name due to his loyalty to his mother. He left Valencia to be educated as a lawyer at the Bologna University. During his time there his uncle, who was elected Pope, granted him significant offices and power until he was finally named a cardinal. He would serve as cardinal for decades decades until the death of Pope Innocent VIII. Using his influence with other cardinals, he manipulated the Curia to elect him as Pope. Rodrigo knew that the Borgias had many enemies. The Italian families disliked having foreigners as Popes. It did not help that Rodrigo had several bastard children with his mistress, which was frowned upon as he was a cardinal. He placed his two sons, Juan and Cesare, in positions of power in order to maintain his influence in the papacy. He also married his daughter, Lucrezia, to Giovanni Sforza in order to gain an alliance with the Sforza family. But the alliance with the Sforzas would not last long. When the papacy required stronger allies, the Pope ordered an annulment to the marriage. This would mark the start of the conflict between the Borgias and the other Italian families. When Rodrigo found out that his enemy, Giuliano della Rovere, was plotting to oust him, he attempted to scare the other states into submission. He threatened the Kingdom of Naples with invasion from France, who had claims on the Neapolitan throne. He made peace with Naples when he married his youngest son, Joffrey, to one of King Ferdinand's daughters. Ferdinand died shortly after, leaving his ineffectual son, Alfonso II, as king. The French king Charles VIII seized on his chance to gain the throne, and with the support of Ludovico Sforza of Milan, invaded in the October of 1494. Genoa, Pisa and Florence all bent the knee and allowed the French army to pass towards Rome. Rodrigo feared that Charles would oust him and place Della Rovere as pontiff. When the Colonna and Orsini families defected to the French, it became clear that the papal armies could not stand against Charles. He allowed the French troops to march into Rome and granted Charles his claim as King of Naples. Charles marched south and took the kingdom for himself, deposing Alfonso. Many of the Italian states, including Milan, who had initially backed Charles, were shocked at how fast he had taken the kingdom. They had assumed the Neapolitan papal armies would defeat the French or at least force a stalemate. In response, they formed the League of Venice, an alliance formed by all the states who were opposed to Charles. Members included Venice, Spain, the Holy Roman Empire, Milan, Mantua, Florence and the Papal States. Charles, who had been crowned King of Naples, realised that he did not have enough men to defeat the combined forces of Italy and so attempted to retreat back into France. The Italians intercepted Charles at Fornovo. Despite having twice as many men, the Italians suffered nearly twice as many casualties. Charles was able to cut through the Italian lines and escape to France with most of his army. The Italians did not look at this as a defeat though. They had successfully expelled the French and had, for the time being, stalled the French invasion. The war had been catastrophic for the papacy. Many of their lands were now under the control of Roman families and the idea that Italy could stand against the French was shattered. Things got worse for Rodrigo when in 1497 his son, Juan, was found dead. He was devastated by the death of his favourite son. Whilst he blamed the Orsini, many suspected Juan's brother, Cesare, who wanted to be head of the papal armies. The Pope would soon take revenge on the lords who had turned against him. From between 1498 and 1503, the papal states would expand rapidly, first reclaiming their lands and then marching against the lords who had refused to back the papacy. The famous Countess Caterina Sforza of Fort Lee, who had been a fierce opponent of the Borgias, was ousted. The lords of Rimini, Pizarro and Piombino were all brought to heel by Cesare. Eventually Cesare was seen as a true power behind the papacy. Some even thought that he was attempting to conquer the whole of Italy and proclaim himself king. Things would turn against Cesare when his father died. Initially, he was able to control the cardinals and had them elect a pope who was loyal to him, but this pope would die a month later. Cesare, who was ill at the time, was outmaneuvered by his father's nemesis, Giuliano della Rovere. Giuliano was elected pope and became Julius II. Cesare was betrayed by his generals and was imprisoned. The pope gave him to the Spanish, who had become enemies with Cesare when he backed the second French invasion. There he would remain until he escaped in 1506. He fought as a general for the Navarrese until he was killed at the Siege of Vienna. Papal states would continue to play a part in Italian politics, although its influence would decline. During the Napoleonic Wars, the French would conquer the whole of the peninsula, and the popes would become subjects of the French Empire. When Napoleon was defeated, the papal states reclaimed its independence. It would all end in 1870, when the states were brought into the newly formed Kingdom of Italy.
By the 17th century, the Italian city-states had little power or influence on the world stage. The discovery of the New World meant that nations like Spain and England could increase their power without need for European lands. The Austrian Habsburgs and the Spanish-French Bourbons would vie for control of the peninsula into the middle of the 19th century, when Italy would unify under the House of Savoy.